Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Let's get underway here. Let's take a quick look. We'll start out with uh, current market conditions. We've uh, had a decent little sell-off yesterday in S&P 500. That put, put us down, back down to mildly bullish. And uh, we, you know, we've been talking about that for really you know, a couple of weeks that we're at the upper end of this range. We saw momentum that was all the way towards the upper end of this extreme range really slide all the way back into this buy zone really in one day. And so uh, ultimately that's a good thing unless we continue to slide here. We'll look at that chart here in just a minute. Also breadth indicator has moved back kind of now into this middle hold type range, non-trending. And even though it says trending, it's kind of stuck in the middle right here. It's not at an, not at an extreme anymore uh, and uh, working its way back the other direction. So, uh, we need that in order for markets to refresh, for them to pause, to create a new base and ultimately move higher without having any real capitulation or fear based selling. Sentiment is still relatively uh, complacent right now. We, we did see we're, we're seeing a lot of volatility in the buy sell ratio. This um, this is not uncommon. It certainly happens and it can happen after some significant trends where we had a really big uptrend here. Now we're getting a little volatility at the top. We saw that big long downtrend last summer. Um, it's it's right now we're a little bit more of an, a, a situation like this. That's just a lot of uncertainty still really presenting itself, and for good reason because we have, you know, the market is about uncertainty. The market is always looking forward, trying to find certainty. And as the as the market gets more information, it's able to you know make. Um, uh, a trade or a buy or a sell, making more decision with the more information that is known or even anticipated. And when we get Fed information like yesterday, that can sometimes potentially shake up the market's perspective of what is happening. In this case, what's happening with the Fed, whether or not they're going to uh, adjust rates. They said that they're not going to cut in March. And uh, so whatever that means, the market is saying, ah, that's a learn. Maybe they won't, maybe if they won't cut in March, maybe they won't cut in the next month as well, or the next um, cut cycle. And keeping interest rates high, or more importantly, that the, the risk of inflation is still, is still high in the Fed's mind. So uh, that, that whole idea of higher interest rates for longer, the market's got to start to settle on that a little bit this going into this year. And that's going to create some uncertainty. And with uncertainty comes volatility. So S&P 500, when we look at the chart, a lot, a lot of things I like to do is um, – uh, the, the the longer I do this, the less I like watching financial news because sometimes it just skews my bias towards what's actually, actually happening with the price data. And, um, and a lot of times it's irrelevant because the market is going to decide. The market is going to ultimately process the information uh, that is being talked about all the time, 24-7. And there's always got to be something new to talk about or this or that. And it's just... It's, it's just noise most of the time. And so if you find yourself in that boat, a lot of times though, I do like, you know, I like business news and I like what's happening with companies and who's growing and who's doing what and what new cool product is happening here. Or, you know, that, I do love that kind of stuff and, and being aware and staying on top of that. But in terms of, you know, te should you buy Tesla or should you buy Apple or should you buy this or should you sell this? Um, it just adds additional noise if you've already got a system, if you're already following a methodology that's working for you, then then outside perspective of anything else is just noise because you're already doing something that's working. It can add, maybe add or subtract, but sometimes that adds additional bias that's not helpful. And uh, so if you you know if you if you find yourself questioning your decisions because you heard something on a financial network or you read something different, then that's fine. I think it's very important to be able to have lots of different perspectives, but just don't let that sway away from your overall core strategy. And if you find it swaying your decision making, then you're not real sound in your methodology at that point either. If you're, if it's easy to jump to a stock or an idea or uh, a methodology <clears throat> uh, really quickly, it's because you're not settled on one already. So. Uh, that's and that's just a you know sometimes that just takes time because there's there's a lot of different ways to analyze market data, and you just have to settle in on something that works for you. Hopefully the the Traders Pro methodology is resonating, and focusing on 
the, that uptrend. We're focused on that uptrend. We're focused on stocks that are working within that overall uptrend. And then we just want to manage risk. Uh, overall, that's really the core to the strategy is we're looking for stocks that are moving higher. We want to see them moving in this direction. And we want to see them ideally working inside of the upper range of this momentum zone. So we call this zone the momentum zone. When we've got a trend that's in place, and we've got our snap tool connected here, and we've got our snap tool connected here, then we are, uh, that's that's our current trend location, okay? And so we're overall focused on that range. That gives us a lot of range to be able to, to trust that trend and trust that decision and say, should I be buying dips? Well, are we in an uptrend? If we are, then any kind of a pullback is going to still be a buying opportunity um, with even within that overall pullback, we may you know really start to make some considerations for di for different things when you start to get some downtrends and you start to get that overall trend that started to shift and move lower. A uh, question typed in here. Let me go ahead and read this. Uh, I have been setting trailing stops on my new buy wheel and wondering, in your experience, would it I make more money in general by setting hard stops and then managing them up when they grow? Um, yeah, I prefer to do that. I, I prefer to set up a, um, a manual or a hard stop of, of a actual fixed price instead of a, a an automated trailing stop by percentage or something like that. You can do that in, in, in almost every brokerage account to say, I, I just want to trail the stop higher by 20%. What that means then is then you get a, a, a high water mark. So if the stock is going higher and you've got a stop loss here, and it moves lower and retraces and doesn't stop you out, and then it starts to move higher again, that trailing stop, if it's just a fixed range of say 20%, then once that starts to move up again, the distance between where that price is and the stop loss changes automatically. That's a, that's a trailing percentage stop. I don't do that. I like to use a technical stop loss level because what I like to focus on is well, let's look at let's look at an example right here because YRD was in our new buy portfolio and stopped me out yesterday because of this move right here. So typically, what I like to do is I I'll start out the stop loss. Well, we'll, we'll go through a couple of examples here. I like to start off the stop loss at a at a reasonable level. Let's look at let's look at a couple of the new buys recently and see um we've got a couple of uh let's look at denison mine okay so denison denison was a new buy two days ago right here we're, we're moving higher the initial stop loss though before that move it would have been grabbing to this high so i've now got this initial two three six retracement here becomes this zone and this 382 become my stop loss. I always want to go below the 236, which is this line. And again, just to show you how that's being generated, I'm automatically connecting this, opening this tool. It's connecting to the swing high and swing low of that time frame. If I move it out to a different time frame, say I go one year and it pulls that price data out, now it's connecting the low and the high of the one year time frame. S similar, similar scenario if I cut off today's move and go to that high. Now I've got another price point. I almost always use a six month time frame though when I'm setting up a new trade for my initial stop loss. I want it to be below the 236 and ideally I want it to be below the recent hold signal low point or the retracement low. So this is an uptrend, countertrend, new confirmation bar. Here's my signal. I want to make sure that I've got enough space between here and a technical location to allow for some volatility. Obviously, if it immediately, you know, reverse in the first few days and I imme it immediately gets to that point, then I need to be out of that trade. I don't know why it's doing what it's doing. And, and, and we hardly ever do. We hardly ever know why it's doing what it's doing. But I need to be out of it because it's now it's now risking my risk capital. And as a part of the strategy, if you're following a systematic approach, you've just got to follow the rules. Otherwise, it turns into. Oh, maybe it'll bounce. 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 Oh, crap. I'm in this thing forever now. Okay. Or because I'm probably never going to sell it and now I'm, it may take forever for it to recover. 
don't let a short-term loss, a short-term small loss turn into a long-term lo large loss, okay? The fastest, the, 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 the first loss should be the best loss and the smallest loss instead of holding on to something forever. And it's okay, it, 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 it's 100% okay to have a loss. It's just a part of doing business. If you own a business, and you spend money on products and you spend money on inventory, you spend money on fixing things, that, that's a cost of doing business. In trading and investing, the cost of doing business to play the game is the risk of getting stopped out, the risk of loss. And so you have to be able to associate that with not necessarily a negative thing, but a, 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 a part of your functional, your rules, you're functioning along a system and that's going to keep you in the game a lot longer because ultimately the market is going to make us money. We are not going to make us money. Okay? Our decision making is not going to make us money to the upside, our, but our decision making is going to prevent us from having losses on the downside. We have to secure and prevent our, our losses on the downside and then let the trend do what it's going to do. It's, some of them are going to run amazingly. Some of them are going to go up a little bit and then flounder. Some of them are going to do nothing. Some of them are going to stop out. We just don't know what the future is going to be. Um, so we have to manage the loss. So, so if I were to, um, uh, let, let me go to y, back to YRD. So, so the initial stop loss, I like to set it below a technical level, which is a support area. And the reason why is if you were to draw a line across here, okay, you get, you're getting price activity here the and you and then you have a breakout and then you get a retest if the market is showing in this case the stock is showing that it's getting demand right here it's getting support at this level and then it gives me a bump or a push or a, i call it a confirmation confirmation bar off of or out of that counter trend move that's enough confirmation that's why i call it a confirmation bar is because it's confirming to me that this area is now support enough that I could set a stop loss right below that and be good to go. Now, how I, how would I adjust that? Let's let me go to YRD now because so YRD we ended up buying that into the portfolio right um I don't think it was that bar. I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty Now we were in it before it moved that big move. I'm pretty sure it was either this bar or the bar right before that. Um so this is our initial signal initial stop loss because of the volatility we can have it wherever we want but ideally i'm always almost always comfortable having the stop loss somewhere in this initial range if this is my buy bar then the next day is going to be my opening price that i buy it at and then the stop loss could be anywhere in this range at that point you can obviously adjust that and even have it a little bit wider the, the, the two things we can control are the position size and the stop loss when managing risk position size meaning how many shares am i buying could i should i be buying 100 shares or 1000 shares and based on my strategy how many uh, how big of a percentage of my overall portfolio is that going to be and then secondarily where is my stop loss because i, I have if i have to if i'm telling myself my stop has to be here i just have to keep it there well that's a pretty wide stop and therefore i'm going to end up having a smaller position size to stay in line with the setup that I want. I'll do another example here uh, because this is a good question. <clears throat> or if I want to have a certain position size and I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine with a stop below the 236 and these support levels, that's fine. If it trace, retraces back down here, I'm fine getting out. Okay. You ask the question, will I make more money? I don't ever, I don't ever set it up based on will I make more money because I never know. Because the st some stocks are going to go up 100%. Some stocks are going to go up 20 or 30 percent. Some stocks are going to go up nothing. Um, so, in terms of um, how much more money you'll make, I don't. I tend not to think that way. I tend to think how much will, how much less will I lose, instead of um, how much more will I make. I let the market take care of how much I'll make, and I'll let and I let my decision making control the risk. So, in this case, it's like okay, I know my risk. If I go in and I say I'm going to buy. You know, if I've got a hundred thousand, and this is not the current value, let's let's go to it. Let's go to another update or another example, because now I want to I want to go through the stop. So my initial stop loss is here. I like to keep the stop in place until I get a confirmation bar and then a retest of that move. 
Okay, so there's two bars in a row, no retest. I'm not gonna adjust my stop yet. Higher, 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 little retest, little retest. Actually, this was enough of a retest. I believe I adjusted the stop on that. Now, how can I adjust the stop? Notice what's happening to that fib line when it's grabbing it. Okay, so now it's moved from there to there. Now it snapped it. What did it do to my 236 line? It drug my 236 line all the way up here. If I wanted to, I could adjust my stop every day to just below that 236. I tend to, to see that I, I tend to add to not do that because I don't want to get stopped out prematurely early in the trend that otherwise would be working. Remember, we're letting this up here be the market and we want as much as we can, but we and we don't want to be afraid of giving something back because then we're trading with fear instead of a system. And if we're just trading with fear, like, oh my gosh, I know what that feels like. I got, I'm, I've made a thousand bucks already on this. I don't want to give it back. Okay. If that, if you're feeling that, then your then your plan is not quite tightened up yet, and you're still trading based on emotion instead of a system. And say, and if that's a part of what you're feeling, that's okay as well. But it's but what you want to experience is, um, oh, that's great. This is the early stages, not the ending stages. This is the early stages of potential new long term uptrend. I want to hold on to that as long as I can. Now. Um, it moves, the next day it moves higher. Okay, it's moving higher here, continue to move. Let's see where we're at. Then we get a couple of big days down. I think it popped up one more time. So now, now this retracement and the confirmation move as, as it's moving back up, this creates a good technical location for a stop loss adjustment. So more than likely I would have allowed all of this volatility to happen, even all the way back here before adjusting a stop loss two big days like that though it may have adjusted like i said may have adjusted it to here below that low point but i want to have it i want to allow it to have plenty of volatility and uh, and sometimes you get stopped out and then the very next day it goes higher we, we can always get back in if it looks like a good pattern but mo most of the time we're getting there's plenty of stocks each day that have that have new patterns and so we can look for opportunities there so now the the stop loss is very sound right here at this location and as it moved once we had this move i adjusted the stop to the two to uh four i believe it was 430 right here below this 236 line okay so now it's moving higher uh i just got my eraser okay let's look at the next day right here right here right here boom i got stopped out on that day okay now could i have made more money if i just would have sold it here yes but who's to say it didn't go to 15 or 17 in the next two days right we that happens on these stocks so i would rather trust that there's that i'm going to get a big winner um versus and, and have a sound stop management adjustment process because I don't like these. These are this is what I get afraid of on these kinds of stocks. Sometimes I shouldn't say afraid. I should say this is this this happens often in these kind of stocks. They rally really hard and then they give it all back or a big chunk of it away in a day or two. Uh, but sometimes they don't. So so uh, so in terms of adjusting the stop losses, I like to use the Fibonacci tool and I like to use the two three six as it's moving higher and a retracement. So if I get a big move and a retracement and then a confirmation and my stop loss was down here, now I can comfortably adjust my stop below this low point because it shouldn't get back to that. In this case, that was worthy in my opinion of a getting stopped out because that's a that's a that's a nasty day and it's a it's a it's a you know relatively thinly traded stock not not too bad but it's it's just a volatile stock a china adr and it is um it, it's worth <laughs> it's worth having the tighter stop loss but trusting that it will go higher but knowing that the part that i'm in control of is the risk let the market be in charge of the return let me be in charge of managing the risk and you'll find that it actually is a it's a more comfortable mindset to get into because then you're not then you're not so worried about, oh man, is it going to, am I going to lose what I have already? 
Okay. That's, um, that in my opinion is worse than getting stopped out, selling a winner that potentially could be a huge winner too soon versus protecting my capital. Um, I would much rather protect my capital and give away some of this potential return for in, in exchange for preserving my capital. I don't want to lose money. I don't want to lose the capital. I don't want to lose gains either, but I also know that there's going to be another stock that comes along and there's going to be another stock that does this and there's going to be another. And, and so it's okay to move along and not be like, man, this thing, I could have made this or uh, next time, next time I'm going to sell it into strength. Or next time I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do this instead of being like I just, I just am following my methodology and I'm adding into a new stock, and sure enough, we get stopped out of that, and the very next day, we're able to buy into, um, we bought into two new positions, Dennis and mine and NXC, so so we get stopped out. These are the two new positions that we add in. And so now we bought on this bar right here, we're in the trade and now away we go. And, and you know, off to the, the races potentially on a new idea. And look what's happening here as well. We're getting basic materials. Okay? You're starting to see things that are starting to shift again in that muscle stocks group. We've, we've been, we've been uh, there's been some, um, a lot of biotech and biomed and immune this is another stock that uh, we bought into the portfolio clear back here and it never had a retracement this is really the first real significant retracement and it's gone up uh significantly i think in the portfolio now it is um yeah we've got a decent gain on it a hundred percent uh, and I did sell off some of the position into the strength on this bar because it was up. Remember the the selling position, the selling process. I will sell into strength if the allocation bumps up to a certain allocation. So let's say I started off at two and a half percent, and I say, okay, markets are kind of topping out a little bit. If it go, ideally, I like it to double. So if it goes from two, if it goes from a two and a half percent holding to a five percent position. Okay, here, what does that mean? That means that the stock has probably doubled or they're or very close to it. And um, and then I want to trim this back to here. Okay, so I'm selling half the position. So essentially, if I had 300 shares, um, was it 300? Where did it go? Right here. So if I had 300 shares to begin with, I sold 150 shares to get this back to 2.5%. It wasn't that... I was selling into the strength because I wanted to lock in the gains. I did, but the strategy for locking in the gains is keeping this balanced, keeping these numbers balanced so that when one gets uh, uh, out of control to the upside, we I call it harvesting. We harvest those gains, and what do we do with those gains? We put them back into the cash pool, and we, but we hang on to some shares. We want to keep some of that runner going as long as it possibly can. Maybe it finds some support right here and goes up another 100%. Maybe it, um, maybe it, um, or maybe it stops us out. We've got a stop loss adjusted now higher on that. And so maybe it's a stop out trade, but we're continually managing that upside and harvesting some of those gains, but keeping on, keeping the, the position. If this, if, the, if this 150 shares doubled again, then I would sell half of those again 75 shares and at some point it's going to retrace enough to stop us out of the full position uh, that's the that's my preferred approach it's a more conservative approach you'll get others that will double it they'll add into the winners on the other direction i think for the most part for the number of trades that we take on which is one each day it becomes enough of a management process that at, you know, doing anything more than that, adding to things, or just add more complexity to it, and uh, and and I, it's within my comfort zone. It's within my trading st uh, style and comfort zone, and so that's what I that's what I prefer to stick with. And uh, you know, so far that little portfolio has done pretty well since September 1st versus S and P 500 at about you know, 7% since then. Um, and we're getting, you know, now we're getting some of these some of these things we talked about this i talk about this every morning in the in the update where we had oil um you know sometimes you'll see these commodities like we've got commodity 
and oil, that's getting a little retracement here today, but it's had this uptrend and started to uptrend. And so we're seeing more and more stocks in these new buy lists that are coming from that name. Not a whole lot today, yesterday because the market was uh, selling off quite a bit. So, okay, good, Kirk, uh, glad. I'm glad that was helpful. Um, that's, yeah, that's my preference is ideally that 236 number and or a retracement. Uh, let me go to um, a couple of these others like CLS right now. So CLS, we bought it on this bar right here. It's up, it's down, it's retraced, it's moving higher. I don't think I've adjusted the stop loss on it yet. <clears throat> Part of that is because it's just, I, I want to give it enough time to get rolling here. Now we've got some gains and now we can consider start adjusting the stop loss uh, on it up to this 236 potentially even as well. Once it starts to go parabolic, parabolic meaning it starts to go straight up like this. When it goes straight up like that, it almost always will give you one of those as well. And so we want to be able to manage that a little bit without giving away the possibility of, of having more upside. If you sell the entire position, you've now 100% guaranteed yourself not to make any more money out of that stock. And it could still be just going, it could be just getting ramped up here. And we wanna be able to try and stay in those as long as we can. They're hard to find, they're hard to, to, to come by sometimes. And we wanna be able to get the, the very most out of it that we possibly can. I'm I'm going to end on that note. If you want to join me in the muscle and the muscle wheel portfolio, um, I will add a link to that in the footer of the recording. And also, if you go into the learning center, if you go to this wheel right here and click on learning center, this top one, I've got a link right here. Join me the muscle portfolio. That actually might be the easiest for you is just to go in and do that. Those of you that are subscribed, I guess if you're not subscribed uh, to the Traders Pro software, then uh, I'll add it. I'll add the link to the to the video here as well. And essentially, what we do is we go through every morning. I will add in which stock that we're buying. Okay, and it kind of looks like this. Uh, let me just pull this over here. Uh, so I use a Discord channel, and inside the Discord channel. Um, I will add in which stocks we're looking at every morning. So we're going to add this stock. Here's our stop loss no, um, stopped out of this trade. And then we also have the current portfolio. So you can continue to monitor that as well. Similar to what we're doing now, but you just get the actual portfolio uh, entry, uh, stop loss, and then the management on that as well. And uh, we're having some success with that. So I'll put that link in there for you as well. I appreciate everyone's time and effort. and. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye now.